break one nine. All right. Uh, everybody, get you a brown book, and let's turn to two hundred and twenty-two. <clears throat> all right. And uh, let's all stand. All right. Two hundred and twenty-two. Two hundred and twenty. On some glad morning fair I'll lose all earthly care And join the one I love I know it will not be long I'll hear the glory song At home in heaven above Some glad morning fair When this life is o'er sing out now. I'll have a mansion grand in that eternal land and join the one I love. I'll leave this pilgrim race to see my Savior's face at home in heaven above. Some that morning fair when this life is o'er we should join the saints in that home above. Some word prayer, please. Dear kind of gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another night to get to come to church, Lord. What a privilege and honor it is of ours to get to come to your house. And Lord, I pray for the next little while, Lord, I pray that every song, every uh, testimony, Lord, I pray that preaching would exalt Christ, magnify your Son. And Lord, may we uh, come to worship you, give you all honor and glory that's due to you. Lord, thank you for the night, Lord, that uh, we get to baptize, Lord. And, and Lord, I, I pray you use these young people's lives, Lord, for your glory. May they be a light in the dark world. And Lord, we sure do thank you that you're still in the saving business. Lord, we sure do have others uh, that need to be saved. And Lord, I'm looking with anticipation to the day that you save them. Yes. And we get to baptize them. Lord, thank you for all that we get to do for you. It's an honor and privilege to get to serve you. Yes. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Let's, let's turn over 215. Oh, the glory did roll. What about that?
I can remember that day. Amen. I will praise His dear name for the wonderful victory and the joy in my Turn over to 205. 205 if we never meet again.
people said, aren't you glad for the promise there is another meeting place? And I, listen, that old songwriter said, some call it heaven, but I call it home. And I'm glad that that, that lies ahead for the child of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, this evening, and ask the Lord to help us. We're glad to have the families of these young folks that are being baptized. And we're so thankful that you're here. And we're we rejoice in the fact they've trusted Christ as their Savior. Most important decision they'll ever make in their life is to trust Christ as their Savior, and we're glad for it. Brother Adam, surely you lift your voice. Ask the Lord to help us tonight. Amen. You can be seated again. I say a word of welcome to you tonight. Appreciate you being here. And um, we, I'm thankful that, that you're here. We got Brother Randall's back. He was out preaching this morning. Brother, Brother Adam was over in South Carolina preaching. Brother Jacob was in, in Tennessee preaching this morning. So we had all of our fellows out preaching, serving the Lord. We're thankful for that. And uh, glad they're home tonight. Brother Adam be headed to Mississippi, New Holly Springs, Mississippi tomorrow. And uh, so to pray God to help them as they travel and be preaching there at the New Harmony Baptist Church, I believe that's right through Wednesday night, so Thursday night. So let's ask the Lord to help them. And then don't forget choir. We'll be going tomorrow night up to Yehula Baptist Church. And uh, let me encourage you, man, we need all the help we can get. We know we got some some out of town traveling on vacation. Others are traveling in today. And I'll get Miss Courtney to send out another message tomorrow. But if you sing in the choir, we desperately need your help. I, I don't, man, they've been kind enough to ask us to come, and I sure don't want to go up there with a half a crowd. And we would, I, I ask you to please do everything you can. I know it'll be a, some of you run to get off work and then run to get there, but I, 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 let's, let's do our best to, to represent the Lord, represent the church well. So I, I implore you, and that's, the, that's a nice way of saying I beg you to be there, but be in your place. And uh, we'll, Brother Jacob, be coming by in the morning. If you want to take your choir book with you, you're welcome to do that, or he's going to come by. He said early in the morning and pick up. And let me just say this. It doesn't matter if you're singing the choir. We'd love you to go just as a church group, Brother. D well, we're going to take one of the vans. If we need to take both vans, we can do that. Brother Ben, Brother ben I asked him if he would if he would mind driving. He'll be, we'll leave here about 6.15 if you want to come and uh, ride a van. Some of you that don't have, uh, that may not want to drive in the night or whatever, Miss Brother Ben will take a van. And if we need to take a second van, we can. And uh, But uh, so if you make plans, want to do that, meet here, or you want to just follow the vans up there, we can leave here at 6.15 or you can just meet us up there. But uh, service will start at 7 o'clock. And, uh, man, we need everybody to help us. So you'll be in your place. Then Tuesday night prayer meeting, 730 for the men, and young men that like to come pray. Then Wednesday night, our last Wednesday night that we're going out and uh, knocking on doors for buses, be going up in the Cleveland area. And I just want to commend again our, uh, our college kids and then our older teenagers and all the adults that have helped them. Man, we've had great groups. And I want to say thank you for Thank you for your faithfulness this month and going knocking on these doors. And we're hoping there'll be some new kids riding the vans to church on Wednesday night. And Awan will be here in just a couple of weeks. And uh, let me, Ms. Amy said, just to mention to you, if you, uh, if some, all you that serve on those cooking teams and in the event you, your work schedules change and you need to change a week or anything like that, I, I didn't not notice I didn't give you the idea to get out of it, just change weeks. But, uh, but uh, if you need to do that, you can see her. And then you that are working in Awana, if you need to let Brother Mike know if there's anything's changed there with your schedule. Some couldn't last year because schedules want to get back involved or however that is. You can see Brother Mike, let him know, and we'll be getting those assignments out very soon. And then Wednesday night, after the, at the kids, y'all leaving here a little before 6, if you could get here going just a little bit further this week. So if you could get here just a little bit and we can get out of here at 6 o'clock, we'll have supper for you and, and drinks for you and go, go hit a neighborhood that we've picked up kids in the past. So, and then Wednesday night at 7.30, you'll be in your place. 
and uh, for the Wednesday night Bible study. And then don't forget next Sunday morning service. Don't forget that Brother Lyman got to go home today, and uh, he still got those kidney stones, needs to pass them, and then battling some diverticulitis. But he did get to go home this afternoon, so we thank the Lord for that. So you pray for Brother Lyman as well. All right. Well, we're going to, uh, let's, the ladies going to play. We're going to stand our feet, and uh, let's see. Brother Will, you bring me a plate, my brother. Uh, we'll take up our Faith Promise Mission offering for our folks. Uh, we'll just stand, they'll play, and if you've got your Faith Promise Missions, you can bring it to the front and drop it in the plate, and then we're going to have the Borden family come sing a little bit before I preach, all right? So let's stand together, you bring for our folks, you bring your Faith Promise Missions to the front, amen.
after all he's done for me i've got so much to thank him for all the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore i'm free to worship free to worship the lord there are so many things that i've been through in my life and you don't know the many times that god has touched my I've got a Bible reason. He said, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. I bless the Lord. I was sitting in my office studying. I heard a familiar sound on the piano and uh, walked upstairs, and, and uh, Miss Julianne and Dawson was working on an old song. Our friend, Brother Micah Henson, wrote this many years ago, and uh, that scene, y'all pick with him, Brother Adam, play with him, and I believe you'll be a blessing to you. You listen to him while he sings. Amen. I can clearly see Paul, a man who gave God his all, as he sits in his cell waiting to die for anyone who listens. You can hear him cry That there ain't nothing better than Jesus He's all I need for this road below No, there ain't nothing better than Jesus And his love for me well it just seems to grow when I'm down and I'm out and I just don't think I'll make it there ain't nothing better than him Now I haven't seen much of this world No diamonds, no rubies, no pearls But I've seen what Paul saw and I feel the same So I'll sing and shout it Oh Lord, I'll proclaim that there ain't nothing better than Jesus. He's all I need for this road below. No. 
Though there ain't nothing better than Jesus And His love for me Well, it just seems to grow When I'm down and I'm out And I just don't think I'll make it There ain't nothing better than Him. Someday I'll be in glory with Jesus and all the others before me. And as I walk down the street of gold, I'll hear those praises ring. Maybe Paul will join me, and together we will sing that there ain't nothing better than Jesus. He's all I need for. Road below. No, there ain't nothing better than Jesus and His love for me. Well, it just seems to grow when I'm down and I'm out, and I just don't think I'll make it. There ain't nothing better than Him. When I'm down and I'm out and I just don't think I'll make it, there ain't nothing better than Him. into the Henson scene since the mid-90s. So over 25 years, I, I remember Micah when Micah wasn't sick. And I can remember him coming to Harmony Street years ago when Micah was young, the girls were young. Lots changed in their family since the first time I heard them sing. Micah went to heaven in, in February of 2009. Brother Roger went to heaven not too many years ago. And I'll never forget, they'd get to singing about heaven and we'd get in a good service somewhere and I'd be with the Hensons. I, we'd been to Texas, Tennessee, all over the country, be, be a part with them. And boy, we'd get to singing about heaven, that last verse. And he'd come up to me and he'd say, Brother Mark, he said in the service like this, he said if Micah was here, he said I'd want to hug him and kiss him on the cheek and tell him, I loved him. He said, but Mike ain't here. He said, so can I just tell you, I'd just put my arms out and I'd say, have at it, Brother Henson. Have at it. Brother, my brother Roger went to heaven, not, I guess, three years ago, 18, four years ago. And I was with the Hensons back in May. And Brother Danny Mundy's right above Macon. And I knew Miss Henson was getting sick. It's the first time I'd seen her sick. And I've seen the last few years, last time they were here, Renee would have to sing the verse, sing some of the words into her mama's ear so she could sing. But this is one of the ones that Miss Henson sang. And you talking about a, a voice that could belt it out, Brother Bill. I'm talking about Vestal Goodman kind of quality alto. Yeah. I'm talking about she had the goods. And I watched them that day in Brother Mondays, and big old tears just dropped off my face. They'd have to lead her to the platform. She didn't always get the words right, but somehow she could get the notes right. And I thought after all that's changed, since Micah penned those words, leukemia came and a death, and then Brother Henson's health struggles, and now Miss Henson struggles. But I believe you could ask Miss Henson, and I believe you could ask Miss Kim, and you could ask Miss Renee if that song was the truth. 
there's nothing better than him. I believe even all the burdens and the difficulties and the struggles, I believe they'd look you in your in the words of uh, we were talking about, oh brother, uh, help me, brother Howard, brother Ron Gares. His words were, "You can look me in my God-given eyeballs, Jack." That's what he'd say when he's preaching. I believe they'd look you in your eyes and look at you with no hesitation. In spite of leukemia, in spite of diabetes, in spite of kidney failure, in spite of amputations, in spite of Alzheimer's, I believe all three of them look at you and tell you, ain't nothing better. Now, I like that second verb, Brother Bill, where he said, I just want to, he said, I want to say what Paul said. There ain't nothing better than Jesus. Sing that second verse. Amen. Amen. And if you think there is, You've not met the one that I know. Amen. Now I haven't seen much of this world. No diamonds, no rubies, no pearls. But I've seen what Paul saw and I feel the same. So I'll sing and shout it, O oh Lord, I'll proclaim that there ain't nothing better than Jesus. He's all I need for this road below. No, there ain't nothing better. seems to grow when I'm down and I'm out and I just don't think I'll make it there ain't nothing better than him when I'm down and I'm out and I just don't think I'll make it there ain't nothing better than him. What a blessing. I want to thank the Lord. I, I thought as Dawson was singing right there, and then while Brother Adam and his girls were singing, I thank the Lord for our older musician, number one. I appreciate Miss Julianne and Miss Amy, and Brother Mark and Brother Adam, Brother Darren, and Brother Jordan at Picks. I want to tell you something. We're blessed with some young'uns that play and sing this morning. Brother Mark had Canaan and Sarah Grace there. And, and man, then tonight, Addie and Abby and then Dawson. And I think about the Smith girls and Brother Sean's girls and just over it. I mean, just all the way through here. You can sit in here with me on Sunday afternoon and they just come in one by one. I Miss Julianne sit down at the piano and they're playing. And man, I, I just, I bless the Lord for how he's gifted us as a church with, with gifted children and kids that want to use their, that want to use their talents for the Lord. And I'm grateful to, and I, I, if I start naming them all, I'll leave somebody out and that is not my intent. I mean, my, I mean, we've got them, I mean, all the way from some that are in grade school to second and third graders that are coming up here and sitting and playing They'll they'll stay with it. They'll be standing up here singing and playing. I mean, I I'm amazed. Em Em played played at the at, at camp. She played for the kids at junior camp one morning, or one evening when they were singing. Oh no, the old story. will never go. Boy, bless me. I said, does it, who know? I said, anybody know that? And Em said, I'll do it. Man, just stepped up there. I thought, praise God, wonderful. That's what it's about. And I I know Charity's taken and, and Mariah's taken and and I bless the Lord for that and. And I praise God, and I, I appreciate these folks, these kids that do that do try to work at it. And uh, I tell you, we're living in a day. I, I, I mean, brother, brother Randall, brother Connie called me last night, and he said, "Do you have a a piano player that 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 I could borrow today?" And all you piano players ought to come hug my neck after church that I didn't throw you out there last this last night. I knew some of you could play, and I thought, but Brother Tom, I, thought, I told Amy, I said, 
But, man, they play what they know. I said, some of them about sight reading. I said, I put, if I throw them out there, they would string me up from the highest point in, in the world. Amen. Can I get an amen, like from like Lily Kate and Emma Claire and Emma, Emma Dyer and, and some of y'all others that, I, that crossed my mind? And, uh, and, and Miss Chrissy, I, was going, I thought about, well, I said Miss Chrissy, I thought, man, that's an hour and 40 minutes from their house, but, uh, or an hour and a half. But, uh, but I tell you, a man can get up and say, God's called me to preach and start out doing it. But you just can't get up and say, I'm a piano player. You can't get up and say, I'm a guitar player. It takes time and it takes dedication. I told Brother Martin one time, and he softly rebuked me. I said, man, I wish I could play that guitar like you do. He said, no, you don't, preacher. I said, yeah, I do. He said, how many, how many types of guitars you wore out trying to learn how? I said, why don't you hush? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want no message preached. I just want to play the guitar like you. And Brother Mark's like preaching me a message. Say, I want you to sing a verse of just as I am and let me repent. You know, I mean, but that's, that's the truth. And these kids that, that labor and study the music, and, and, and there's more to it than just sitting down and taking off with it. To study the theory and the notes and all. And I, 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 just, I just want to tell you and tell the Lord, I sure am grateful that he's blessed us. And I'm glad they get up here and it don't sound like a rock concert. Can I get a witness? Everybody all right? I mean, man, I, I'm glad it sounds like church music. And I, I thank the Lord. I, I'm, I'm grateful to you. For, I'm grateful to them for that. I thought about Ephesians chapter 2 tonight, if the Lord will help us. We, we're celebrating in just a few minutes. Brother David, I appreciate Brother David getting these, the baptistry ready and, um, and, and getting it warm. And it still excites me not only to baptize, but it excites me to baptize in here. I mean, Brother David, you didn't have to go out there and take the, the plug out of the well and drain that water down through there knowing there's no way to warm that water up. I don't care if it's in the middle of July. That water feels like it came out of a, out of a, river, a mountain river. And last time we baptized in the pool behind the church, Brother Mark and I baptized in November. And the first, the, that middle of the week, Brother Dave, you remember that? It's the last time in November we thought, man, we'd had a little break in the weather and it was a little bit warm. I said, let's just baptize. And we run that water out about Wednesday or Thursday. Man, it turned off cold, 40 degrees, 35, in the 30s at night. And that Sunday morning it was 41, 42, mist and rain. And I told Brother Mark, I said, Brother Mark, we're going to baptize. But I said, we're going to get in that water. We're not going to testify. We're not going to preach. And we're not going to pray. We're going to baptize, and then we're going to get out, and then we can preach or testify. And he said, can I wear my waders? I said, no, I don't have any waders. And if I'm not wearing none, you ain't wearing none. I was getting back at him for preaching to me about that guitar. <laughs> and uh, you remember that? You remember Brother Dave? Brother Dave remembers. Cole, he's still bitter about that over there. But uh, it, I, I thank the Lord. I, I'm, I'm tickled to death. I wish we had to baptize every week. And you know that is a possibility. You know who dictates that? It ain't, we're not not baptizing because God ain't saving people. We just got to we just got to quit wearing the backside of our britches out on a pew and bring some sinners to church. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I still believe the preacher of the gospel will still save people. Amen. And it's amazing when you think, well, man, if I invite somebody, I, I, I invited the other day. I was at the, the other night. I was. We forget that it works. I, the other late in last week in revival, I was going home and I was thirsty and I stopped at the store up the corner, and uh, it was Brother Mark's. It was Brother Mark's uh, renter, and and she said, "Boy, you're out late tonight, aren't you, preacher?" I said, "Well, we're having a revival." She said, "Yeah." I said, "Won't you come to church tomorrow?" I said, "Man, we'd love to have you." She said, "You know what? I think I will." And guess who walked into church the next morning? You know, I think sometimes we forget that it really does work to invite people to church. I mean, we're sitting right, right back there, believing his parents. Brother David and y'all took, what, 30 minutes, walked down the road, your neighbors, and, and Daniel took that little life basket, that resurrection basket at Easter, and look at here, they still here. What a, ain't that a blessing? 
It still works, and I thank God. For, I told them, I told them on the Friday night revival, said, man, it's tickled me to death for y'all to be here this week. They said, preacher, we felt at home since we got here. Y'all ain't getting rid of us. I said, man, that's the way I like it, praise God. Amen. And I, I'm thankful the Lord, but I, I'm, I'm glad he's saving people. But, man, we prayed for a baptistry in here, and this is, what, the third, fourth time we've gotten to baptize since getting in. And I bless the Lord for that. But we're celebrating when we baptize we're celebrating the fact that somebody has got born again. They've got saved. And I thought we would look at that in Ephesians chapter number 2. So let's stand together. It's good to have all the families and friends of those that are being baptized. And I bless the Lord for that. Amen. Some of the most wonderful verses in your Bible are in Ephesians 2. And every one of us that are a child of God, we can find ourselves in these verses and if you've never been saved, you can find yourself in these verses as well. The Bible said in verse number one, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit of now, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were the flesh of the, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, boy, that changes the whole context of the verses. Those are pretty dark verses in verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. But it's like Brother Scotty when he said, But God, somebody just reached over to the light switch and cut the floodlights on. And it said, Who is rich in mercy. For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places that in, that in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Brother Adam preached right there during COVID on Daddy's Rich. You remember that? During the middle of COVID in, in the fellowship hall on a Wednesday night, old Brother Adam preached on Daddy's Rich. I'm glad, thank God, we've got a rich Savior. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You can be seated. The Lord will help me for just a little while. I'm not going to preach a long time, but we're going to baptize these young'uns. And Brother Kelly, I'm glad he got saved this morning. I bless the Lord. But I want to preach on this thought, saved, saved, saved. Saved. Saved, saved. You open that church hymnal, you begin to peruse the pages. You'll find one that we like to sing around here, and it was written by Mr. J.P. Schofield, and that song is Saved, Saved. J.P. Schofield wrote that song, Saved, Saved, after one of the meetings in Gonzales, Texas, where Mordecai Ham was preaching. Mr. Schofield sat down at the piano bench, and he wrote these words, I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. That chorus said, saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my soul, it, my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. I tell you, Mordecai Ham was preaching that night in that meeting on the subject that Christ is our refuge and sitting in that very meeting there in that Texas uh, in that Texas congregation was a man uh, who had killed uh, four other men he listened as Mordecai Ham preached about the fact that Christ uh, is a refuge uh, for sinners not only is he a refuge for sinners but he's a refuge for any and every stripe of sinner amen and he began to talk about those cities of refuge three in the east uh, and three in the west 
and he began to show uh, uh, how those uh, cities of refuge are a type of Christ uh, and uh, those cities of refuge are a haven of hope uh, and uh, eternal forgiveness for everyone uh, that will flee to those cities. Amen. And they said about halfway through the sermon as Mordecai Ham uh, uh, preached, uh, and old Mordecai, I just say this to you, Mordecai Ham was a Jew and uh, man, his parents disowned him and uh, before, uh, but as his mother got sick later on in her life, uh, he wanted to go see his mother and dad. His dad had told him, he said, don't you ever come back in this yard. Uh, he said, if you ever come back to this house, he said, you're going to have to uh, leave Jesus Christ on the outside of our yard uh, or don't come back in. And Mordecai Ham, his mother was dying up in the second floor of their home uh, and he pulled his car up to the gates. He wanted to go see his mother and he wanted to go in and visit with his mother before death. And as he sat there and looked up to the window where the light was burning, where his mother was dying, he replayed the words over his uh, uh, dad's words in his ear that if you come in this home again, uh, uh, you're going to have to leave that Jesus Christ on the outside. And he said, Mordecai Ham bowed his head and prayed for his mother. And he put the car in drive and walked out. You're talking about somebody that believed what he preached. Amen. Uh, but he was a preaching that night about Christ, uh, uh, being his refuge. And he sat there as he was a preaching. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, that man that had taken the lives of four other men, he jumped up in the air, sprang with his arms, reached out high, and he made this statement. He said, saved, uh, uh, saved, uh, saved. Uh, uh, sitting there in that meeting, sitting there in that service, uh, as Mordecai Ham preached on the fact uh, uh, that Christ is our refuge, uh, uh, that man that was a murderer, uh, uh, that man that had taken the lives of those other men uh, had found Christ to be a refuge uh, for a sinner. And what old Mordecai, that uh, J.P. Schofield who wrote those words uh, uh, said he was so stirred by what happened in that service uh, uh, that he sat down at the piano the next afternoon uh, and penned these words, I have found a friend uh, who is all to me. His love is ever true. Uh, I love to tell how he lifted me uh, and what his grace can do for you. Uh, I like the latter part of that course. Life now is sweet uh, and my joy is complete because uh, uh, I'm saved, uh, uh, saved, uh, saved. Uh, uh, can I tell you, J.B. Gambrell said it this way. Uh, he said salvation is the end of the Christian life. Now don't get nervous. Somebody thinking the end. Uh, it is the end. It's just the front end. Amen. Uh, in other words, he will send us that salvation uh, is where the Christian life uh, and the Christian journey begins. It's the front end of the Christian life uh, of being saved. It's the starting point. Uh, uh, getting saved is not the stopping place. Uh, and may I say to you, although the Lord Jesus uh, expects us to go on, and these young people uh, that will walk down in the baptismal waters, uh, uh, this is just the embarking point. Uh, uh, this is the place they're launching out their public testimony, uh, that they are a child of God and they are a Christian. Uh, but can I tell you, God's looking for them to go first. Further. As Brother Chris preached just a little or prayed just a little while ago, a Lord used their life for the glory of Christ. That's what He wants to do. And I pray in years to come, as I grow older and they grow older, uh, that I'll see them sit here on those these pews uh, and they'll be singing in the choirs and singing the specials and helping out in the ministries. That is uh, uh, the will of God. Salvation is just where we get on the boat, praise God. Amen. I like that word saved. We, 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 we're living a day where that seems like that word bothers folk. Saved. What's that word saved mean? It, it, it speaks of being delivered. It speaks of being rescued. But it's a, it's a little bit different, not just delivered or rescued, but it carries the meaning of being saved or rescued in the nick of time. In the nick of time, by a save from some impending danger, it describes what God has done uh, through Christ for us uh, and to us and in us. Uh, and as believers, we've been saved from something, uh, but we have been saved uh, to something. And can I say God's never saved a person in their sin? He always saves them from their sin. I'm telling you, listen, God uh, is not going to save you and leave you in the old life and leave you in the old 
old way, uh, but he's come to pull you out uh, and set your feet on a solid rock uh, and establish your going so they can see your song. Uh, he saved us from the penalty of sin and he saved us from the power of sin. And when he returns, he's gonna save us from the presence of sin. I tell you what, if you, if you could describe me in one word, I believe I'd choose saved. If you just had one word to, de to describe a Christian, could there be a better word than saved? Oh my, let me give you three quick things. Number one, let's look at these verses in, where it talks about the explanation of our salvation. What happens when we get saved? Why do we need to be saved? Look at verse one. I want you to notice the condition of our past life. He said, you, everybody, everybody listening, you, y'all hear me? You, and when I'm reading that, it's saying you, it's all of us, Brother Bill, Every one of us has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Can I tell you the condition of a person uh, before they get saved or they are dead in trespasses and sin? Well, you say, well, I was pretty much alive the morning I got saved. You might have been physically alive, but you were spiritually dead. You were spirit. It's that deadness speaks of a separation from God. It speaks of a depraved nature that you and I are born with. Hey, it reminds us when it talks about dead and trespassing and sin. It reminds us that we are not sinners because we sin, but rather we sin because we are sinners. We are conceived in sin. We're corrupted by sin. We are consumed with sin. There's nothing we can do but to get ourselves to God. We are helpless and hopeless. That word trespassing, it means to slip or to deviate. It's often used to speak of a traveler who has departed from the path, who has departed from the way. And can I say that's where we were? That word speaks of a deliberate departure, a deliberate swing. And can I tell you this morning or this evening, whether, listen, it doesn't matter what side of the tracks you come from. It doesn't matter how many commas are in your bank account. It doesn't matter what the emblem is on the front of your car. You're the same place I was. And I was the same place you were. Oh, we were dead in trespasses and sins. That word sins is a hunting term. It means to miss the mark. You've missed the bullseye and you've come up short. You may be close, but friend, you will miss the target. You may not turn over a new leaf. You may make all sorts of resolutions. You may set all kinds of this. This is our talk in our modern day. You may set some short-term goals and you may set some long-term goals. I don't care what kind of goals you set. Uh, you may come close to the target, uh, uh, but listen, you and I are of a depraved nature, uh, and outside of Christ, we will never hit the bullseye. Lehman Strauss said, man separated from God because the life cord's been severed. That life cord was severed because of sin. The condition of our life Ain't much said about sin anymore in the day in which we live. That's why we ain't seen a lot of people get saved. People don't know they need to get saved. They don't know they're, they're sinners. Man, why do you need a Savior until you realize you're a sinner? Amen. Verse 2 and 3, the conduct of our past life. He said, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, spirit now work of the children of disobedience. I'm hung also, look at here. What's that next word? We. You talking about a personal text. He said in you, and now he said we. Also, all had our, what, who? All. All had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh. Can I tell you something? In other words, your conduct and my conduct was heading in an evil direction because we were led by an evil deceiver. Amen. Listen, this is hard. This this may sound hard, but they ain't but two they ain't but two families. You're of your father the devil, or you are your father Christ. It, 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 it's not Jew Gentile, it's saved or lost. When the Titanic sank, they had a board. The two, the two, uh, the two, uh, the two groups that they had was known to be saved and known to be lost. Known to be saved and known to be lost. And can I tell you, every one of us, I, I, I just want to say it again. I want to drive that home. We are sinners. 
Amen. That is what we are, and that's who we are. <laughs> we do what we do. We go where we go. We watch what we watch. We say what we say. We think what we think. We live the way we live because of our sinful nature. Man calls it an accident, but God said it's an abomination. Man calls it a choice, a chance, but God calls it a choice. Man calls it a defect. God calls it depravity. Man calls it error. God calls it enmity. Man calls it fascination. God calls it fatality. Man says it's luxury. God calls it leprosy. Man calls it a mistake. God calls it madness. Man calls it trifle. God calls it a tragedy. Man calls it weakness. And God calls it willfulness. We're sinners in need of a Savior. And sometimes as parents, it's hard for us to grasp the fact. We're going to baptize three wonderful children. They weren't drunkards. They weren't thieves. They were not, they were not addicts. They were children. But you know what else they were? Sinners. But Chris, did, did, did Clay ever cry when he didn't need anything? Did Callie ever cry when she didn't need anything? They ever pitched a fit? Huh? I wouldn't embarrass them this, but can I tell you, their children are just like my children. They lie at times when they're little. You say, why? Because they don't want to be corrected. Amen, everybody all right? I could ask every one of us, don't, you say you're picking on them. I, if Riley Carter were sitting here, I'd tell you the same thing about them. Amen. You say, well, man, I've, and what we do, we try to put them sins in classes. Well, I've never killed anybody, and I've never, I, 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 I've never raped anybody. I've never done this or done that. Have you ever told, if I ask, if, if you'd ever told a lie, you'd either have to let everybody in here have to lift up your hand, or you'd be telling a lie now. Amen. Everybody okay? And I, I see, I said, if you told a lie, raise your hand. They some of them looking around like, I said, you're a liar now. But James puts that in the context. He said, if you broke one part of the law, he said, you're guilty of them all. Amen. And we need a we need a savior because we are a sinner who is separated from God, and we can't get to God by ourselves. Amen. And that's what we're celebrating, salvation. The experience, what about not only the explanation of our salvation, what about the experience of our salvation? I want to say it again. You, me, and everybody in this building, we're sinners. Some of us are saved sinners. And some of, you, some of us may be lost sinners. But even us that have been saved, we're just saved, sinners saved by the grace of God. You say, well, I've never cheated, I've never lied. Well, you're a liar. You've never stolen, you've, cor you've never caroused, or you've never partied. It said, man, I can't tell you, it doesn't matter if you don't drink, it matter don't you don't smoke, it doesn't matter if you chew, it don't matter if you date girls that do. Amen. Everybody okay? But you are a sinner, not only by nature, we're sinners by choice. And our sin, as sinners, our sin separates us from God because God is holy. And the Lord said at Calvary, my Eli, Eli, lemma so back to now, which is to say, my God, oh my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And can I say to you, if the Lord Jesus, if God the Father turned his back on his own son because of sin, don't you think there'll come a day where he might turn his back on us because we're sinners? Amen. As sinners, we're helpless and hopeless to, to change our situation. The conduct of our past life, it disgraced God. The condition of our past life displeased God. The character of our past life disgraced God. You say, well, preacher, that ain't very celebratory. Well, somebody might say, well, how can a grievous sinner experience a glorious salvation? How can a sinful man that is walking in the course of the verses one, two, and three. How in the world can they have merit with God and go to heaven when they die? There's one word in our text that explains that question. It's found in verse eight. It's the third word, grace. 
Grace. Amen, Brother Bill. Grace. Amen. Paul talks to us in verse number four about the God of grace. I want you to get a hold of this picture. We're sinners. We're dead. We're defiled. We're disobedient. We're dirty. We're depraved. We're despicable. We're doomed. But then all of a sudden, verse four walks into our text. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. I was a corpse and you were a corpse. I was wallowed in the slop of this sewage of this sinful world. But God, hallelujah, but God showed up, stepped on the scene and changed this picture from one of gloom and one of glory. I'm glad Ephesians 2 did not end in verse number 3, but I'm glad, thank God, there was a verse number 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, you talking about a transition or a turning point, those words describe a turning point in the destination of a man's eternal soul, but God showed up, stepped on the scene and changed this picture from gloom to glory, from gloom to glory. The word quicken means to make alive. You were dead. We walked the course of this world, but God. We couldn't get to God, but God came to us and breathed life into our dead and dark soul. But that's not only, we don't see just for what God did for us, but in this text we see what God did with us. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, he said, and hath raised us up together. Verse 6, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That, that word hath raised us up, that is, something, that is something that has already taken place. It's a finished act once and for all, which includes a continuing process. Are you listening to us? Listen to me. I just want to say this to you as a child of God. You're not seated with Christ. You're not seated by Christ. You are not seated near Christ. You are seated in Christ. Amen. So as far as losing your salvation, how are you going to do that? Because you're in Christ. Christ is in God. God is in heaven. How are you going to lose it when in the mind of God you're already there? Amen. As far as God is concerned, we're there. Not only the God of grace, but look in verse 8 and 9. What about the gift of grace? For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. There, there, there's, there's millions upon millions that cannot get that truth in their mind. They're trying to work their way to heaven. They're trying to live clean enough to get their way to heaven. They're trying to do something and work and work. But salvation, friend, understand this, as much as the gifts are under the Christmas tree in your home in Christmas, that's how salvation is, a gift to a lost world. Amen, friend. It's free. I didn't say it was cheap. It's free. Didn't cost you anything, but it cost him everything. You take an artist, you take one of these great authors and can put words on a piece of paper, these famous authors, and man, make it worth thousands of dollars. You say, what is that? That's genius. Mr. Rockefeller could have signed his name to a piece of paper and made that piece of paper worth millions because of the business deal that he was backing. You say, what is it? That's capital. You take somebody that's gifted with metal, take an old $5 piece of sheet metal and add their, add their abilities to it, make it worth $50. You say, what? That's skill. You take, up, you take somebody that can paint and give them a blank pan, canvas and give them some paints and <coughs> give them a little time and boy, they can make a masterpiece that's a, a piece of treasure. That's art. But only God can take a worthless, wicked, dirty, rotten, low-down sinner uh, and put him and wash him in the blood of Jesus, put the Holy Ghost in him, uh, uh, change his life and cause him to be a blessing uh, uh, to those. That's not genius. That's not skill. That's not artistry. That's not, uh, uh, that's not capital, friend. That's grace. A lot of people are depending on a what to get them to heaven. You better be trusted in the right who to get you to heaven. Amen. Amen. Number three, and I'm done. What about the expression of our salvation? How, how, how do we express our salvation? Well, Jonah 2, 9 said salvation's of the Lord. It's God's work from start to finish. 
Can I say this to you? We don't work to procure our salvation. You say, what's that word procure? We don't work to get our salvation. We work to prove our salvation. Are you listening? In other words, we don't work to get saved, but we do work because we are saved. James said, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. James was not saying that faith and works together save a person. He just said if faith lacks works, then the absence of works probably reveal that your faith is dead. Amen. Our life, verse 7, look at your Bible. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward, through, toward us through Christ Jesus. Our life expresses our salvation. We were dead in trespasses and helpless, hopeless, could not get to God. But he came to where we are. God did for us what we could not do and provided us with the gift of salvation. And he said that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. In other words, God saved us to live for him. And that life that we're to live for him is an excellent testimony and reality of our salvation. In the ancient world, whenever someone would find a person that was, was suspected to be dead, they didn't call the doctor or they didn't just, what they would do, they'd go get a little mirror and put that mirror under their nose. And that mirror would con condensate if there was breath coming out of their nose. And that mirror would prove and give evidence that that person was alive. And if there was no appearance <coughs> and there was no evidence on that mirror, then that person was pronounced dead. If there was no marks, could it be if there's no marks in our life today might be an indication we're not living, that, but we're dead? Let me just say this to you. These kids, we're about to take them in. Brother Kelly, we're about to take him in that water. Can I say this to you? We don't get baptized to get saved. We get baptized because we are saved. Amen. There's, there's, no, there's no saving power in that water. There's no, there's, no, there's no saving power in that act of obedience. We're just doing what the Lord said. These children and Brother Keller are making a public declaration. They are identifying with Christ. It is a picture openly of what happened privately in their heart when they trust Christ. Amen. John Calvin got this right. He said, it's faith alone that justifies, but faith that justifies is never alone. Come on, Miss Julianne, I'm done. Not only does our life express our salvation, but our love expresses our salvation. He said, for we is his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in him. That workmanship, I, I didn't know this. But that word workmanship comes from a word, poema, which means poem. Where we get our word, poem. Uh. In other words, God saves us so that we can be his poem to tell his story of the grace of God to all who come in contact with us. The old story will never grow old. Do you know why I serve God? Because I want to serve him. Do you know why I want to serve him? Because I love him. Do you know why I love him? Because he saved my hell-bound soul. Now, I can't do enough. I hear people say, boy, you're going to pay for your sins. Let me just say this to you. Ain't nobody paying for their sins. You may suffer the consequences of your sin, but ain't nobody paying for any sins. Because you're not qualified to pay, and I'm not qualified to pay. You can't pay for somebody, something that's already been paid for. Amen. Years ago, the Pacific Garden Mission was known as the Old Lighthouse. And it was owned by Mr. and Miss William Taylor. And they were, they were cordially known as Ma and Pa Taylor. They labored faithfully right there in Chicago, Illinois. 
Some of you that drive late at night, listen to Christian radio, you hear those stories of unshackled. Man, I, I like to hear them stories. They don't, normally it's 1, 1 32 in the morning. If you catch a good radio station, you'll hear them play those unshackled stories. And a lot of times they don't tell you who it is until they get to the end and talk to you about the grace of God. Those, that, those two individuals labored to help homeless and helpless and hopeless people. There was a man that they had helped through the years. They knew him as Mac. Mac would come to the mission every night and he'd sit through the service and he'd have to listen to preaching and night after night he'd live, leave unmoved and unsaved and unaffected by the message. Boy, the, the workers around the Pacific Garden Mission became burdened about Mac. They got to know Mac better and discovered that his name was Walter McDonald. He was a professional dancer. Said he had the fastest feet in the West. That's what he was known as. And they said he would come in between dates and bookings and he would come and stay in that mission. And said one night, <coughs> Mac heard an old Indian give his testimony of salvation. And they said when that invitation came, Mac was the first one out of his seat, came running to the altar in the old, in the old Pacific Garden mission. They said Miss Taylor was sitting at the Steinway piano that Billy Sunday had donated to the Pacific Garden Mission. And she was sitting there playing, and, and uh, boy, she saw Mac come, and she got off the piano and went down to play with, pray with Mac. And she got close to him, Brother Chris. This is what she was hearing Mac pray. He said, but Lord, you don't understand. Lord, you don't understand everything I've done in my life. Lord, surely you can't save someone like me. About that time, Ma Taylor put her arm around Mac and said, Mac, Calvary covers it all. Calvary covers it all. I said, it don't matter what you've done. He said, Calvary covers it all. That night, Walter McDonald got saved, got to become a part of the family of God. They said a few weeks later, Ma Taylor sat down at that Steinway piano she got to reminiscing about the night that Walter McDonald got saved. And the only thing that she could, the phrase that just kept coming back into her mind was the phrase she said to Mac, Calvary covers it all. And said, Miss Taylor sat down and penned these words. Far deeper than all the world could impart was the message that came into my heart. How that Jesus alone for my sin did atone, and Calvary covers it all. Calvary covers it all, all my past with its sin and its shame, all my guilt and despair, Jesus took on him there because Calvary covers it all. What we're celebrating just a few minutes ago, in just a few minutes, Brother Mark and I walked down in that water with Clay and Callie, then Cammie will come down, and then Brother John, will, he'll walk into those baptismal waters with Kelly. And it doesn't matter. Kelly, how old are you, sweetheart? Eight, nine? Nine. It doesn't matter if it's a nine-year-old past or a 50-year-old past. Calvary covers it all. Boy, the devil will torture us with our past. And man, you think, goodness, man, I, I botched it up. Man, I made, I made a mess of things. I got good news for you, child of God. Calvary covers it all. It doesn't cover most of it. It don't cover 99.9% .9 of it. It covers it all. It covers it all. And we celebrate salvation because every one of us could find ourselves, whether you're, if you're lost, you're still in the first three verses. But if we're saved, we used to be in those three verses. But I'm sure thankful for two words in that text, but God. That's real dark, but God, who is rich in mercy, who is rich in mercy, who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us, glory to God. Saved, saved saved. 
I remember when our boys were born, the very first time I ever held them. And with just about every child, I would probably say I did it with Clay. I did it with Callie. I've done it with just about every child that I've, we've had mourn in our church family. And y'all young as you get older, when I come in there to see you, you don't have to ask, do I want to hold a baby? Yes, I want to hold a baby. Amen. You say, what do you do? I take the children up, and I want the very first things they ever hear come off my lips. I hold them up, and I, this is what I say. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The other morning when Clay got saved and Callie got saved, they met the man that I told them about. They don't remember me telling them, but I remember and God remembers. I was thankful for the day our boys were born. But I think I was even more thankful for the day they were born again. I told the Lord, and some of you won't understand this, but I told the Lord early on in their childhood. I said, Lord, I'd rather take them to an early grave and see them in heaven and them live a full life and die without Christ and go to hell. It would have crushed me beyond measure to have to take a child that God gave us and put them in a, in a cemetery. But I'd have rather put them in a cemetery and saw them in heaven than live a life with them and spend eternity separated. He said, I don't know that I could pray that. Well, you get to thinking about them not being with you in heaven. It'll change the way you pray. It'll change. Six months, Riley came. And Brother Mark, you'll remember. You probably prayed with him, son. Nathan would pray. And he'd come and he'd say, I'd say, Riley, why did you come, son? He said, well, Daddy, he was just honest and matter of fact. He'd say, Daddy, I'm praying about getting saved. You say, what would you do? We pray together. He said, you tried to talk to him. He didn't say he'd come to get saved. He said, he's praying about it. But I'll never forget that night. We were singing for a long time. I traveled down a long, lonely road. My heart was so heavy and sin I sank low. But then I heard about Jesus. What a wonderful hour. I'm so glad that he brought me out through his saving power. And I was given an invitation. That was the night Brother John Mr. Henson got saved. And if we've ever had two extremes get saved in the same night, I'll never forget what she told me. I was standing right there, and she came to me. And, man, we had been praying for her. And, Brother John, Miss Jessica had been witnessing to her. And she come out of there, boy, I'm talking about, man, her life was in a mess. And she started to tell me, Brother John, all that was wrong. And I said, huh, you don't have to tell me. I said, I can't do anything about it. And while I was dealing with her, the preacher's young. My boy came right over here. And while Misty was over there with a broken life, am I telling it right, Brother John, a broken life? And on this side, a little preacher's boy that ain't never known anything but church. And the same God that saved her in a broken, sin-riddled life. You know what? Riley was in the same condition as she was. He was as lost as she was. He was as dead. Well, David, dead's dead, ain't it? Dead's dead. And Riley, well, he might not have decayed as far as she had, but he was as dead as she was. And if God's ever showed us that he could save whatever spectrum, he showed us that night.
That night, he didn't come to say, they asked him, Brother Nathan asked him, Brother Bill, he said, Riley, why didn't you come? He said, I came to get saved. It wasn't I'm praying about getting saved, I'm thinking about, he said, I've come to get saved tonight. Amen. Carter told Brother Mark, he said, tonight is my night. I'm getting saved. I'm glad whether it's preacher's children or as it's folks whose life has been ruined and wrecked by sin. I'm glad we can tell them, Brother John, but God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us. I'm glad we can look at them and say, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You remember that, Brother Knight? You remember, Dave, you remember when Carter came? You dealt with him in that altar. You said, why didn't you come, Carter? He said, I need to get saved. He, Brother David said, Lord speaking to you? He said, yes, sir. He said, what did he say? Brother David asked him a good question. He said, what did you say? He said, Brother David, the Lord told me tonight was my night I'd get saved. I remember. I'll forever be indebted to you. You and Brother Mark. I'm glad somebody didn't get a hold of him. It just said, repeat after me. I'm glad. I'm glad you let him bear his heart to you and you prayed. My, my boy got saved. You know what? Tonight, I feel in my soul like just putting my hands up and saying, like the man in the Texas tent, saved, saved, saved. The day when you got up as a 16 year old boy, and that alt, you could have stood up and said, saved, saved, saved. But Kelly, when you got up out of that altar this morning, you could have lifted your hand and said, saved, saved, saved. And Clay and Kelly, when Clay and Kelly faced, I got to FaceTime them. Amy's FaceTiming me. I'm in, I'm in South Dakota preaching and and she FaceTimed me, and I could see him over there praying. And then they brought him up. I've gotten to watch you play ball, and I enjoy, I enjoy watching you play ball. I really do. But I ain't never heard nothing more precious come out of your mouth than when you said, Preacher, I just got saved. It's wonderful. And Callie, with her little broken, quivering cheek, tears dripping off her face, Boy, the night Cammy got saved at camp, she, she got saved in the bathroom. Went in there and she come out and she was just squalling and crying and happy all at the same time. It was not a, not a sad cry. She was joyful, joyful. She, I said, do you want to call your mom? She said, yeah. And I, I sat there and Ashley, I believe, was with me. Was you with me? We were sitting there, Brother Bill, outside that service, and Cammy's tears dripping off her face, and she's joyful and full. And to get to listen to that child tell her mama, I just got saved, mama. And she said, oh, I'm not. And she was crying. She said, I'm crying, but I'm not sad. She said, I'm crying, but I'm not sad. Saved. 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 Maybe you're here tonight and you've never been saved. You said, I didn't come expecting all that for a baptism. Well, that's what we're celebrating, salvation. That's what that baptismal act is. It's a picture, an outward picture of an inward act. Well, if you've never been saved, it'd be a good night to get saved. Today is a day of salvation. Now is except regret a lot of things. I, I thought I ran into a young man at lunch today that we play ball with. I don't know that I've seen him since we graduated. One of the toughest young men I've ever known in my life. But he wasn't like all the other boys. He didn't cuss and carry on and party it out. He was just a clean young man. And we sat and had lunch together, reminisced. As I studied this afternoon this text, I thought, man, there's some things I regret. I wish I could do over. But I tell you one thing I've never regretted. I've never regretted getting saved. 
I appreciate what Brother John told Kelly. He said, Kelly, we've known each other for all our lives. He said, we did some things before I got saved. And Brother John said, he said, let me ask you something, Kelly. He said, how many of them things have I done with you since 2005? And Brother Kelly's answer, Brother John, was none. Brother John said, you know why? Because I got saved. <laughs> what you told him, wasn't it? So what you were saying was saved, saved, saved. And I think you would have to agree the Calvary covers it all. We're going to stand. Maybe some saved folk might want to come thank the Lord for saving you. If you're here and you've never been saved, it'd be a good night to trust the Lord. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. She's going to sing. We'll open this invitation. You say, I'm a visitor, I'm home. It doesn't matter if you're a home person, a visitor. I promise you this, you won't have to come alone. Somebody will come with you. You trust the Lord. You sing on. Amazing, Amazing grace. grace. Boy, how fitting a song. How Amazing grace. Sing it with us. That say a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace, sing that second verse. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour. I first believe. All God's people said, amen. Well, you can be seated. Brother Adam's going to come lead you in just a couple of songs, you that are being baptized. Right. Well, uh, you can uh, remain seated. We'll sing these songs. On Wednesday night a, a while back, I, I told a story about when I got saved and got baptized. My dad was the song director, and we would go down to the backwater in the creek and get saved, or get baptized. And when we went down into the water, we'd sing this song. To get your song, but it'll turn to number 384. I'm sorry, yeah, at the bottom, 384 at the bottom. Shall we gather at the river? And we'd sing this one going in. <clears throat> On the first now. Shall we gather at the river Where bright angels' feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing from the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. On the second now, on the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray. Shall walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Ere the shining river, lay we every burden down, grace our spirits will deliver and provide a 
will gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining will quiver with a melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. All right, we're going to go over then to uh, page number 376, 376, at the bottom. When we went down in the water, we're speaking about gathering at the river of death. And that's what life outside of Christ is. It's dead, just what he preached. But when we are come up, amen, in salvation, we're alive. Amen? amen? We're alive in Christ. And we're bound for the promised land. Page number 376, at the bottom. All four verses. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. second now all o'er those wide extended plains shines one eternal day there God the sun forever reigns and scatters night away I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land oh who Sorrow, pain, and death are felt and feared no more. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Miss Julianne on this last version. I want to do it about half time of that right there. Kindly, here we go on that last verse. When shall I reach that happy shore and be forever blessed? When shall I see my Father's face and in His bosom rest? Sing now, I am bound for the promised land. Tell you what, I've known Kelly probably since I was maybe 10, 11 year old. And uh, me and Kelly's done a lot of time in the jail together. A lot of time. He was always one of them fellas as a young kid when I'd get arrested, he'd kind of take me under his wing, Brother Howard. He knew who my family was and he made sure I had what I needed or had what I wanted. Not what I needed, but had what I wanted. And he took care of me. We was over here Monday night at Revival. That's when all this started. I went to the altar and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I've lost my burden for sinners. Tuesday night at Revival, I got home. Kelly was sitting on my steps. 
I called Brother Mark Wheeler and I said, look, you're going to have to help me pray. This old boy's messed up. And throughout the night, I tried to stay with him in the living room and make sure he got some sleep. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about right now, but it's, I'm not trying to glorify sin, but he was messed up. And we made it through the night and I called the sheriff the next morning and I said, look, I need a favor. I said, oh, Kelly showed up at my house. I said, but he's messed up. And I said, he's got to get clean before I can help him. Stacy said, I think he's got a warrant on him. He said, won't you let me arrest him? And I struggled with that for a minute because that was my friend. But I thought, Lord, he's, he's got to get sober. Well, make a long story short, Wednesday morning, they locked Kelly up. And I told him, I said, when you get out, find me. Friday night of revival, when revival was over, I got home, Kelly was sitting on my steps again. Amen. When the headlights hit him, I looked at Miss Jessica and I said, I can't lie to him. I said, I ain't never lied to him. And when I come up the steps, I said, Kelly, I need to tell you the truth. I said, I had you arrested. He stood up, hugged my neck, and he said, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> And for weeks now, for a week now, I've watched him struggle and hunt and find. He knew what he had wasn't the real thing. That's right. yeah. But he had been messed up on doctrine for so long by so many people. that finally, I told him, I said, Kelly, if you'll keep searching, I said, he's already looking for you. You just keep hunting him. And I tell you what, it was a blessing this morning to, for the pride bowed down to pray. The preacher said, J.D., and pointed he was in the altar. I put my arm around him. I said, Kelly, what'd you come for? He said, come get saved. Amen. So I tell you what, it's a blessing and an honor. Because in obedience to the Lord's command, and upon his profession in him, I baptize thee, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I tell you what's a blessing when I get to watch somebody that I baptized baptize somebody else. Amen. That's what. Come on, say it. I remember what she said. I was just thinking, I looked at her a minute ago and I thought, I tell her mama, I'm crying, but I ain't sad. Amen. Boy, we came in first came, she was so quiet, couldn't hardly get her to talk. But boy, she's had such a smile on her face that she got saved. I'm glad he said, suffer the little children to come after me. I'm glad they don't have to wait till they're grown and their lives are spent. I'm glad these precious children can get saved. Brother Chris, don't you ever forget that, Brother David, as y'all so faithfully work with our children. Put that Bible in them. You Wednesday night, you Wednesday night teachers that they help them memorize their verses. Most of these kids have learned enough verses in the Bible, they about lead themselves to the Lord. I praise the Lord. In obedience to the Lord's command, upon her profession in him, I baptize this my sister in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Come on here, Brother Mark. I'll baptize Kelly and you baptize Clay. How about that? Come on, sweetie. Several months ago, I talked with Brother Chris and Miss Mary, and Miss Mary called me, and Clay got to ask him questions about being saved. And that was in the early spring, I believe, late, late winter, early spring. And man, we got to praying for him. And it wasn't long after that, Clay started lifting his hand. I gave him an invitation. He, God was dealing with him. 
and just never did step out and come, and all that's in God's time. But boy, it was a glad morning when they called me and told me that Lord Amy FaceTimed and said, Clay just got saved, and Brother March and Miss Mary and Brother Chris were praying with Callie. And all that time, we'd really been focused on praying for Clay. And man, right there, God just saved them both on the same day. <laughs> I remember when God saved their mama. Well, I rem that's how many years ago, Mary? That's been 17, 14 years ago. I remember what I preached that morning. I preached on going to hell from Calvary. And Mary got saved. Well, Chris shouted that morning. I thought, good night in the morning. What a blessing. But now to see your children get saved is tremendous. Wonderful. Amen. In obedience to the Lord's command, I baptize this my, and upon her profession in him, I baptize this my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Here we go. That, that's right. Amen. Yeah. Come on, Father. Brother Michael, baptize you. Holy to God. Amen, son. Hello. Well, blessing that morning to see Brother Clay. I'd, I'd seen him the week before at music camp one night there. He admitted that he was lost and needed to be saved. And I know he's been doing that before, but just had a special burden for him all that week, you know. And then uh, preached that Sunday. Got to see him come get saved. And see his sister get Boy. saved. Ain't nothing like that. Amen. Ain't nothing like that. Hallelujah. It. Nothing I'd rather do <laughs> than be helping sinners. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, they need to be saved. Amen. Because I know where, I know I, I know one thing to do, and that's point them to the Jeez, one who can right. save them. That's right. Because I can't, the preacher can't, nobody no. else can't. But we just pointing people to Calvary. That's all we're doing. Yes. It's all we're doing, is pointing people to the cross. What a blessing. Amen, Clay. Hallelujah. <laughs> mm. Oh my. Mm. <laughs> in obedience to the Lord's command and on your profession of faith in him I baptize thee my brother in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost here we go right. Amen hey. Bless the Lord hey. I thank God for missions I thank God we can put money in that plate. But Mark will be going to Alaska in, in September. Miss Kim will be going to Honduras in September. Brother Mike Edwards will be going to South Africa in October. But Matt and I just got back from Africa this year and then out in South Dakota in June. I love the mission. Hey. But there ain't no place I'd rather see people get saved. Been right here. Hey. And I'm glad that he saves people from all over the world. But I want to lift my hands tonight. Yeah, go ahead. And thank the Lord hey. that he saves our children. Yes. And saves our family. And <laughs> saves our friends. And saves their family. I don't ever, I don't ever want to, I don't ever want to get unthankful in them. And unappreciative of God helping us. Ain't nothing I'd rather do than stand in these waters with these well I don't care if they're six or sixty, forty six or thirty six. Just to know people have trusted the Lord as their Savior. Hey. It's a blessing. I give God the glory. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that's within me bless his holy name. Well let me just say one more time. I want the last thing you hear to be this. If you sing in the choir, we need you to help us tomorrow night. Don't want to get too late. Did y'all did y'all know if we're like if you sing in the choir, we really need you to help us tomorrow night. <laughs> Amen. And uh, if you want me to pray for you in a good spirit, <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'll pray for you aware of it. But Lord, please come help us tomorrow night. Brother Kobe started tonight preaching the service. I'll preach tomorrow night. 
And I'm excited. I, very rarely do I get to preach close enough to where our choir can go with us. Preacher Moore used to take years ago, every Friday night, Preacher Moore would take the, take the uh, Peace Tree Road Choir with him every Friday night and sing somewhere and then load that bus up. And it, it's a real joy for y'all to get to be going with me to a revival meeting. I bless the Lord. So please come. We'll meet at 6. We're going to leave here at 6.15. If you don't want to drive, you can come ride the van. And uh, we'll, if we need to take both vans, we'll take the vans. And if you just want to follow the van, but please, please, please come help us tomorrow night. It'll be a blessing. Stand to your feet. Let me say to all of our guests, thank you for being here. We trust that you enjoyed the service. And I hope you'll come see us again. May God bless you is our prayer in Jesus' name. You're at liberty. God bless you. Thank God there's more water. Ain't that bad?